The obvious opening is I'm delighted to be here. Instead, my opening is I wish I didn't have to be here, by which I mean this is a topic, marketing, selling, developing products for women, that I wish after having studied it, thought about it for well over 15 years, I wish we, you more than me, I wish we'd won. I wish that every company had woken up to the fact that women are their primary customers, that women are not men. But the reality is we have to have this conference still, at which point I will say I'm delighted to be here. This is, uh, has been for me, for many of you, I realize it's been a lot longer battle. Uh, this is a 15 year big part of my life. When I look back at my professional life or my later professional life that pretty obviously started with In Search of Excellence in 1982, uh, in addition to the keys to that, pay attention to your customers, uh, if you really empower and trust the people you work with, it's very important. There are two areas that beyond that, two areas that became obsessions of mine. Uh, number one, was design. And I described my passion for design as cool things are cooler than things that are not cool. Uh, and then number two, which in many respects has been number one, is marketing to, selling to, and servicing women. Women. That all important last 51% of the market, that all important set of human beings who purchase approximately $30 trillion worth of products a year, and so on and so on. Now, I've chosen some words very carefully in that prior sentence or two, developing products for marketing to, selling to, and servicing. Often, and I know my great pal Marty Barletta was never guilty of this. You hear, there's a conference on marketing to women. There's another conference on marketing to women. Well, fine, that's part of it. But in the duh factor arena, marketing what to women? Wouldn't it be nice if it was products that women really wanted? And so this process begins not with marketing to women, but it begins with developing the right products. And then it goes through marketing to women, and then it goes to selling to women. My point is all of these things are equally important. And we tend to emphasize one, I adore you marketers, but you ain't the whole game, you're just one other part of the puzzle. In 1996 in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, my sales vice president at my training company, who happened to be a woman who incidentally was promoted while she was on maternity leave, but we won't talk about that. Uh, she said, you're coming to Boston. I said, why? She said, don't worry about it. You're coming to Boston. And in a conference room in Boston, I was uh, introduced to about 15 women from the first woman to drive an Indy 500 uh, car to a woman by the name of Judy George who ran a big uh, retail operation, to a woman who was very senior in Disney and so on. And my colleague, Heather, said, you're gonna learn from these women about what the deal is with women. And for the next three hours, I was regaled with story after story after story, just stories. Stories of the wrong product, stories of being ignored by doctors, by surgeons, by bankers, uh, and by people in every other walk of life. This three hours was an epiphany. And it really isn't an exaggeration to say that my life has never been the same. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, I, my co-author of In Search of Excellence, Bob Waterman, once said, Tom is not really happy unless he's mad about something. <clears throat> and I'm usually mad about things where the alternative is really stupid. And we're ta as, as Marty said, I think it was her first book, she said, we're not talking about a niche called women, we're talking about the market. 
the market is women, and I would add the niche may well be men. So I started collecting these stories, and the stories got <clears throat> better and better and better. Uh, I'll just tell you one. I was in the UK. I didn't know whether this stuff had anything to do with anything other than Americans, because I am one. And this woman, woman who ran a middle-sized financial services company there you know, came up to me after talk, and she said, I was in a car dealership. The, uh, the Brits, until recently, tended to give their senior officers cars, you know, tax dodge or whatever the heck it was. And she said, I was looking at this car. The salesperson comes up to me. She said, this is the truth. And he said, gosh, honey, I'm really delighted to see they're giving secretaries cars. And, you know, the first 27 times I heard stories like that, I obviously thought it was hyperbole. By the time I had collected stories 6,372, all of which were de facto the same, I decided that I understood the deal. But it was still not much more than half-hearted until I came to my second duh. And that duh is if you're going to develop products for women, if you're going to market products to women, women if you're going to sell products to women, and if you're going to service products for women, guess what? Women have to be in charge. If there's a social justice issue here, fine, but I do that in my spare time. This is, I sometimes say, not really after the financial crisis, this is a greed issue, i.e. it is to say this is a market-driven issue. This is about profitability. This is about growth. Uh, well, it's pretty darned obvious. I happen to believe that women and men can, upon rare occasion, get along rather well, but we are significantly different. Uh, and I believe that the only people who can, I mean, remember I told you how much I love design? I got in a lot of trouble at a big design conference, 87% male designers, when I just said, oh, and by the way, men are not capable of designing for women. The good news is I'd already collected my pay ahead of time for this particular speech. But, you know, simple. If women have different sets of ways of evaluating things, i.e. the sales transaction, it's not exactly weird to say women are going to understand that better. Product development, that's a no-brainer. I am thrilled that for the first time, the now recovering General Motors Corporation has its lead product developer uh, as a woman. I was in Australia giving a speech I'd do with Peter Drucker and honoring his life's work. And again, I had a luncheon and there was a woman there who again ran a financial services company. And she said, okay, time to put your money where your mouth is or what have you. I just put you in charge of a financial services company, not my company. Uh, you walked into the first meeting of the executive committee. There were two women, 14 men. What are you gonna do? I'm not for quotas, or at least it's a very complicated topic, but if 80% or 90% of the people who are buying your product are women, then in my opinion, you gotta have more women than men at the team at the top. And again, that's to me in the category of duh, not sophisticated financial analysis that requires a PhD in economics. One final thing I would say. Uh, as you are far more aware than I am, there are certainly not enough women in the seats of CEO jobs in Fortune 500 companies. Uh, one of my responses to that is, who the hell cares? Fortune 500 companies are increasingly less relevant. Small and middle-sized businesses are what matter, and women are really doing an utterly fabulous, fantastic job in that regard. My response were relative to the Fortune 500 thing is it's 2025. There are five candidates for a Fortune 500 CEO job. All five of them are women. I expect, based on my mathematical skills, that a woman will be chosen for the job. Uh, the numbers stink today. I acknowledge that, but the ball is rolling. Uh, I have nothing more to say except about four more hours on this topic, but I'll limit it to about 30 seconds. Uh, I've had a ball for 15 years. Uh, women have taught me an insane amount about this business topic. 
and along the way I've learned a lot as well. Uh, I'm delighted that you're having this conference. Uh, I'm sorry that we have to have this conference. The game has not been won. I do believe there has been significant progress, uh, but there's a lot to worry about. There's a lot to develop uh, and, and have at it. Marty and Nan have given you a fabulous agenda portfolio of people who are going to talk to you. And I am thrilled and honored to have been asked to make these opening remarks. Thanks very much.